Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we're going to continue our exploration of Snowflake Cortex. Specifically, in this video, we're going to look at the ML functions and I'm going to talk you through what each one of those are at a high level before we dive into a demo using the anomaly detection function. I'm going to show you how easy it is to detect anomalies or outliers in your data using these new functions. I hope you find it useful. So just what is anomaly detection? Well, simply put, it's finding those outliers or those oddball data points that just don't fit the historical data pattern. It's things that are way out there and don't conform to what you expect to see. But with Snowflake Cortex, you can train a model to spot and identify these outliers in your time series data. Now, you might be wondering why is spotting outliers so important? Well, if your data is clean and accurate, your insights and predictions will be much more reliable. Plus, detecting anomalies can help you figure out where things are going wrong in your processes, some things you might not even be aware of. For example, you can pinpoint a problem that started with your login pipeline or identify those days when your snowflake costs are unexpectedly high. Anomaly detection works with both single series and multi-series data in Snowflake. Multi-series data represents different threads of events. For instance, if you have sales in multiple stores, Snowflake Cortex can check each store's sales independently using a single model based upon the store identifier. Crucially, your data needs to include two things, a timestamp column which has a fixed frequency or interval like every hour or every five minutes, and a target column, something that represents something that you want to track at each timestamp, like sales, for example. Now let's get into the demo itself. We're going to use a sample data set that you can get off the Snowflake documentation website. It contains daily sales of items for different stores, along with daily weather data like humidity and temperature, as well as if that particular day was a public holiday or not. So firstly, we're going to set up our data for this demo. And the first thing we're going to do is create our database and then create this table within our database called historical sales data. In here, we're going to insert a bunch of records for our stores. So we've got a store ID and we've got stores one and two. We've got a number of different items, jacket and umbrella, the date crucially that these items were sold. Then we've got the number of sales for each of these days. We've also got temperatures and humidity and holiday. So we're just going to create this database and populate that table within it. And so this is our historical sales data in our example, stuff that we know about. It's already happened and we've got it in our database. Next, we're going to create a table, same structure, same schema called new sales data. And in this table, we're going to insert some well, four records, two for each store. And this is our new income and sales data that we want to compare with our historical data. Firstly, we're going to create a view over our historical sales data. We're just going to look at store ID number one and items um, that equal jacket. So all jacket sales for store ID one. In here, though, crucially, we're just going to pull out the date and the number of sales in here. That's all. Next up, we're going to call our anomaly detection model in this way. So we create a replace snowflake.ml.anomaly detection basic model, and then we've got a number of parameters that we need to fill. Input data, we're providing the view that we've just created. We tell the uh, model basically what our date column is and our target column, in this case, sales. So let's do that. It's going to create our, and train our model with the historical data. Once that's done, we're going to create a view over our new sales data. So these four records that we've added in there. So again, date and sales, store ID one, and looking at jacket sales only. We've called that view view with data to analyze. And that's important because now we're going to call our model that we've created to detect anomalies. And the input this time is this new view of the data to analyze. And again, we tell it the timestamp, we tell it the target column, and we run that particular statement. Now, as we look at the results and we look at the new sales data, let's just take a step back for a moment. Our records here for our jacket sales, especially this one here, um, we've got 20 sales on the 17th and six sales on the 16th. If we go back up to our, our historical data, we can see that typically we're making two, three single figure sales on a daily basis for jackets. 
However, we do have this particular record here on the 4th of January 2020 where we saw 30. Now, that is potentially skewing our data and our model. If we come back down here then where we've got our new sales data and we've got six jacket sales on one day and 20 on the next day, we'd probably expect this to be anomaly based upon this data. But this record here is getting flagged as false because we've got a sale of 30 in historical data. And so if that's fine and that's getting picked up in historical data and we're thinking that's normal, then this is skewing our values. So the bottom line I wanna make here is in the previous example that we've just ran, the result of the model appears to be inaccurate. Now that's probably because of two reasons. We didn't use very much data to train the model on. Um, essentially just these rows here um, is what we're basing the model on. So any significant fluctuation in the data is going to heavily skew the results, especially this one on the, third of, uh, on the 4th of January. We sold a large number of jackets in that skewing the predictions upwards and increasing the size of the prediction interval, um, which then when we give it the new sales data, it's not flagging at any outliers as well. We just want to put this data into a table so we don't lose it. And this is how we do that. We have a begin statement. We call the model again with the same values to the input parameters. We then set a parameter and we call this little SQL ID um, function here, which gets the last statement ID of the, the, the query that just ran, which is essentially this one. We then assign that to the variable value X and then execute this statement straight after, which grabs the results of this output for the model, essentially these two records we see here, and creates in a table called my anomalies. So let's just run that first of all, before we address how we can best improve and make this model more accurate. So we've created our table, there it is, there's our two records in here. So how do we make this model more accurate? Well, we can improve the accuracy of the anomaly detection model by either including more training data or labeling the training data, otherwise known as supervised training. So labeling the training data has an additional Boolean column that indicates whether we already know if a historical row is known as an anomaly. And labeling can help the model then to avoid overfitting as we just saw in the previous example. Coming back up to our historical sales data, we can see we've already got this label column in our data and this label is a boolean value which tells us if we've already identified any anomalies or outliers in our data of which this record is one so now when we train our model we want to tell it we want to label our data this is because we're actually helping the model with a level of supervisation let's go back to see how we use this so we're going to create a view now we're going to call it view with labeled data for training same queries before, but now we're bringing in that label column crucially. So then on here, we're gonna create our model trained for label data and notice that we've added a new input field called label column name. And we're, call, and we're telling the model specifically what to use, what Boolean flag to use, where it is, so we can tell it, oh, okay, in the historical data, these are what were the outliers or anomalies to take into account and then not necessarily include it in future predictions. Using this new model then, we can then call our new data of view with data to analyze, just using the same syntax as we used with the previous example, but this time we're using a more accurate, or what should be a more accurate model. And notice this time where we've made 20 jacket sales for the store, it is flagged as an outlier, and that is what we would expect based upon the training data that we've given it. So that's how you use label data for supervised learning and make our models more accurate. Next up, we can include additional columns for analysis. We go back up to our historical data, temperature, humidity each day. What if we wanted to include these in our models because we might think they're a factor when people buy jackets or not. Is it true to think that when it's colder, people buy more jackets than when it's warmer? Well, let's have a look. If we come back down, to here, we're gonna create a new view, view of training data extra columns. And in this one, we're gonna have the original columns that we just used, date, sales, label, but we're also gonna include temperature, humidity, and if it's a public holiday or not. 
We're then going to create and train our model. Again, we're going to um, use our label field in here along with our timestamp and target column names as before. We'll execute that. And then we're going to create a view over our new data, but this time include the extra columns that we need to run our model over. Now we're going to call our model and run it against that new data. We've also got this prediction interval now in here, and this allows you to specify a level of sensitivity within your models. So by default, the value that's set for this prediction interval within Snowflake is set to 0.99, which means that roughly 1% of the data is marked as anomalies. But you can specify any value between zero and one and to mark fewer observations as anomalies you specify a higher value for this prediction interval closer to one to mark more observations as anomalies then you reduce this interval so this is kind of fine-tuning the level of sensitivity of your models in this case i'm just showing you how to do it and i've dialed it back a little bit from 0.99 which is the default to 0.93 and the output here we've got with a forecasted value of what we should be expecting. Here we were forecasting seven, just over seven, and we did six. And again, we're forecasting seven here, and we did 20. So we know that's an, an anomaly. Let's just go back. So we already know this is an outlier in our data from the earlier example. If I go back and just look at what our original criteria was, here we can see our forecast was quite a little bit different. We had just shade under seven forecast for the 16th and then 11.4 and when we used our label training data our forecasts were just under eight for both those days but once we've introduced the additional columns and fine-tuned it using the prediction interval well we can see those predictions are more accurate coming down to 7.08 for both these days and that's the benefit of being able to include additional columns and fine tuning your models using a predict prediction interval. And that's how easy it is to work with these ML functions in Snowflake Cortex, give it your historical data, ideally labeled for more accuracy, and with additional columns that you think may influence the result of the variable you're trying to predict, in this case sales, and fine tune it further using a prediction interval. I hope you found that interesting and useful. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing, new videos coming very soon. Hey, it's Adam here and I just want to jump in real quick and just give you the latest information on the Master and Snowflake program. It's now in its third year and it's doing really well and there's more people than ever showing interest and joining the program every single day as we enter the new year of 2024. And this has been designed really for people who are quite experienced working as an IT uh, data professional. Most of the members on the program have between 10 and 15 years experience working with commercial databases, they're very comfortable with SQL and all of the different terminology that goes with data warehousing and running databases at an enterprise scale. And so these people, um, they might have scratched the surface of Snowflake, it may have intrigued them, they may have no knowledge of Snowflake, but a lot of sort of Teradata, SQL Server, Oracle on-premises experience, and they want to know, crucially, how do they leverage all of that time and money that they've invested to get to the point in their careers they are today and leverage it for the cloud with Snowflake. So I designed the program exactly for those kind of people because back in 2017, when I first got my hands on Snowflake, I was in a very similar position. I had to learn through trial and error, testing out what worked, testing out what didn't work, and then coming up with a set of recipes that really worked in Snowflake to address common real world challenges. And so once I had those, I packaged those up and put them into this program. And this program is certainly not about theory. Of course, I introduced what the, the technology and capabilities of Snowflake does. But crucially, I tell you how you can package up Snowflake's out of the box capabilities to address real world challenges. I've run through with live demos. I provide you with my code assets and templates to download and use within your own environments or use as a starting point to customize further. You'll get access to my Everest guide to help solidify some of the uh, the knowledge that you're going to um, you know, be recipient of during the program as well. So three different kind of areas to the program itself. One is the on-demand um, training portal available 24 by 7 with all those downloadable assets on. It's all video content produced by myself, so you know 
who's delivering that. You know what the learning style is going to be like from watching these kind of YouTube videos. It's going to be direct. It's going to be to the point and it's going to be enabling you um, get the maximum value for yourself, your career and your organizations that you're working for or working with. You'll also, as a member of the program, get access to the private members only LinkedIn group. All our members globally who join the program get access to this. It allows you to ask any questions around the course, around Snowflake. And um, that could range from interview, question and answer guidance through to other tooling um, such as Matillion, DVT, Elation, Power BI, you name it. You can ask the question there and I will help you to the, to the best degree I can. But of course, I don't know everything. The other members then can also join in that conversation and share their own unique set of experiences because everybody's on this journey together. Further to that, there's a weekly 60-minute group consultancy call, again, hosted by myself. You can come in and it's a different vehicle for you to ask questions and get guidance and support. Um, different vehicle than the LinkedIn group. It provides live real-time feedback. Finally, it's a one-off investment to join the program, but once you're in, you are in for life and you will not pay a single cent or penny more to get access to all future updates to the program. And the great thing is we can... Um, drop things into the program as and when we see fit based upon members' feedback or based upon new features and services Snowflake are released into the market, which is very frequently. Um, if you don't know, Snowflake release new features every single month to the market. So we'll apply a lens to that and work out what's publicly available to Snowflake customers and what's going to be most impactful for our members to learn. At this point, you may be aware that I've offered a couple of books on Snowflake as well. And so you get the chance to work with me and help build this community out. In the program, we cover 10 modules. Within each module, there are a series of lessons going into real depth in each one. And we get to an advanced level of uh, knowledge. So we try to cover everything possible from a capability perspective within Snowflake. The Snowflake lessons are continually evolving, as I mentioned, as Snowflake grows and evolves as a product as well. And a great example of that is Module 10, Developing Applications in Snowflake. We've recently added a native application demos in there, so you know how actually to package up and create your own native applications. We've also got Streamlit um, lessons in there, where we hook into the Open AI API and actually query um, large language models in Snowflake. We also hook into the Snowpark API and work with Snowflake as part of those lessons. So loads of value, um, loads of great um, feedback, Here's all lessons, loads of great feedback from various um, valued members who are also part of the program because as I mentioned, once you join, you're in there and you continually get value from that and it follows you as you and your career grows. Some of the people I joined at the outset three and a half years ago still have access and still get continual value today. I hope you find that useful. If you want to apply, um, it's invitation only and I review all applications personally. So have a look in the link in the video description and I'd be really pleased to welcome your application to the program.